Hello. I've come here to report upon a crisis which affects every home in this land. The very foundations of the economy are threatened. And you'll understand why there is this general national alarm when I tell you that the fish and chip shops of South Wales are running out of chips. If you don't immediately realize the gravity of this disaster, just think of Italy without spaghetti, China without rice, France without wine. Here, the fish and chip shop is the pillar upon which society rests. Blame the winter for this catastrophe. Seed potatoes have been frozen and killed in the ground. The New Jersey crop has been set back, and Welsh friars must wait for the new potatoes. South Wales, it seems, has had its chips. And the General Secretary of the Welsh Area Council of the National Federation of Fish Friars, no less, has said that if they can't get potatoes for the next ten weeks, South Wales will have to revolutionise its eating habits. Across Britain, our 13 or 14,000 fish and chip shops enjoy a turnover of more than a million pounds a week. But nowhere are so many chips consumed by so few people as here in Wales, where their nightly input is measured in thousands of tonnes. There are 760 fish and chip shops in South Wales, or one for every 2,000 of the population, and they provide the main meal of the day for countless families. The 69 chipperies frying tonight in Cardiff alone will each get through five to ten one hundred weight sacks of potatoes, and the price has gone up from around ten shillings a sack to more than forty shillings. To explain how Wales will stand up to this national calamity, this chip crisis, playwright and author Gwyn Thomas. Well, it won't stand up, it'll sit down, I think. Because, I mean, we've taken such a number of beatings in our time, national identity lost, the language lost, a large part of the religion lost, but I think that we'll put on a Custer's last stand for the potato and the chip. Well, what is it about the chip, then, that makes it so imperative to you that you've got to cling on to it? Well, there's the succulence of the thing, and, of course, it provides us with the one thing that we need for the national mind, for the national spine, the starch, the stiffness, the rigidity that we have lacked as a nation. We are too soft, we are too flexibly, and I think that we have... Uh, relied very largely upon this strange vegetable for our kind of climactic stiffness. What about the fish and chip shops? Do you think they feel uh, that there's a certain disgrace in going over to meat pies, let's say? I would say so, because in my, in my childhood, the fish and chip shop, which sold absolutely nothing else but fish and chips, possibly a bit of evangelical grace on the side, and we used to foregather there of the evening, and the, the chip shopkeepers of my time were a very compassionate race of people, they loved taking a long time over warming up the vats for the first lot of chips. And in the meantime, of course, we were urged to recite and sing, which meant, of course, that the chip shops of Wales were a kind of extension of the university. I sang myself so hoarse on so many occasions that I received free chips for at least four years of my life. How, how is it that the Welsh um, fell into the terrible grip of the chip? Well, I would say the chip is the most polite and pleasant way of starving, of course, and we've been invited to starve on many occasions in our historical career. And the chip was a marvellous way of doing it because the chip in itself, possibly without personality, but with salt, which kills, and vinegar, which apparently kills, was the perfect diet for us. <laughs> it was the quickest way out. <laughs> but what is there about the Welsh character that makes you as a nation so susceptible? Is it the death wish? In a way, yes, and of course all the revivals that warned us against sex and sin and improvidence. And of course we felt that our spines were wilting under this tremendous burden of theology. And we wanted this great ultimate stiffening and we found it in starch. And we have been up to our hips in chips ever since. A great need. This to us is what music is to the Italians and statues to the Greeks. This is the great culmination of human experience. The chip, this warm, savoury thing, which will never betray you, as adultery might, which will never inspire you unduly, as art might. The chip is the chip, it is life itself. Now, it seems to me on my tour of the world's <coughs> chip shops today that chips are being sold in, in paper bags everywhere. Now, I thought the <coughs> newspaper was part of the mystique. This is a very, very important thing indeed, because we as children, when we got our chips in newspapers, got the larger part of our culture, the larger part of our political education from reading around the chip. We would actually delay over the eating of a chip because we were fascinated by the political comment made by the chap in the newspaper. 
and we would very often forsake a certain cooker of chips or fryer of chips because he was taking the wrong paper. And I think that this must have taken a large part of the magic out of this wonderful landscape when they have gone over to these strange, aseptic, terrilene things or whatever it is they're using. So what effect do you think the crisis then will have upon the Welsh themselves? Well, they'll probably be a little more confused for a short time. But if the shortage of the potato is going to continue, I am absolutely certain that many parts of the Welsh economy are going to be switched from the new lustrous paths that are being pointed out to it and back to the fields, back to the hillsides, where we will be able to produce potatoes the size of footballs and without any need for lacing them up either. Though here in Wales it's the vanishing chip that's causing concern, thank you, we're all faced, it seems, with the vanishing potato. The potato in its natural form is already on the way out in America, where a group of agricultural experts have just predicted that by 1970 we'll all be eating something called frozen dehydrated mashed potatoes. What a ghastly thought. From the Rhonda, good night. <laughs>